they evacuating us? Oh my god, oh my god. Holy cow. That's crazy. On December 30th, 2021, the most destructive wildfire in Colorado's history, known as the Marshall Fire, destroyed more than a thousand homes in the suburbs of Denver and claimed the lives of two people. This place is burning over here. The Sopties were one of the many families who lost their home. Amita, her husband Manu, and their two kids were on vacation at the time of the fire and watched everything unfold through their security cameras. And we were on a beach, I remember, and we were in disbelief. We were like, this can be happening, we'll be fine. But when they returned to Colorado five days later, they saw firsthand the damage that was done. It was just gone, it was ashes. One car was in the garage that had blown out pretty much and the garage door had melted and fallen on it and the rest, everything was ash. It was a, <laughs> it was a hole in the face of earth and just, it was disbelief. I could not believe that the entire neighborhood was wiped out with that one fire. Wildfires are not uncommon in Colorado, but the Marshall Fire was an outlier. Most fires affect rural parts of the state and this fire destroyed suburban neighborhoods. And it happened in the middle of winter, leading some scientists like Sen Lin He from the National Center for Atmospheric Research to conclude that fire season, once limited to the summer, is now a year-round threat. Climate change has affected uh, the um, Colorado climate. Um, first, the increased temperature in the past uh, few decades uh, actually uh, leads to melting of the snowpack, and this also increased the dryness of the uh, Colorado climate. Enter the Passive House, an energy-efficient building standard that has an unintended secondary benefit, fire resistance. Passive House was originally intended specifically to to directly deal with the climate crisis, and uh, buildings are such a significant part of that. Andrew Mishler is a leading passive house designer. He built the first certified passive house in Colorado. The exteriors of these buildings are made from non-combustible materials. They are also built exceptionally airtight and are equipped with things like triple pane windows that are more resistant to impact, extra thick insulation. This is about 10 inches of insulation. Fewer nooks and crannies where smaller fires could start and a specific ventilation system that even filters out smoke. There's this old building science adage where we say, Build tight, ventilate right. Passive House really embodies um, these two principles. Zoe Kaufman is a research engineer at the National Renewable Energy Laboratory with a focus on energy efficient buildings, including Passive House. I would really focus on air tightness and mechanical ventilation as the core reasons why Passive House inherently is great for building around fires. That's because during a wildfire, windblown embers often enter homes through broken windows and attic vents. So sealing off the home and avoiding traditional methods of ventilation makes these homes safer. And it works just like a regular door, except for when you close it, these clamps come out and grab the frame. And then you're filtering all of your air and providing balanced ventilation. All this is going to reduce all of these particles that are not wanted in your home. So each room is being delivered fresh air 24 hours seven. Andrew Mishler lost his home to a fire in Oakland in 1991. And that connection to the Marshall Fire inspired him to design a more affordable passive house model, specifically for those who lost their homes, like the sob teeth. You pass me the oil, honey. After some deliberation, the sob teeth have decided to rebuild their home in their neighborhood. The whole rebuilding is to show the kids the resiliency. You lose, you build again, and you, you build again better. Finding Mishler's passive house option cemented their decision. So the whole idea of passive was already, I, I was bought into it. I'm like, this is, this is the way to do it. I'm going to do it. And fires are imminent. And this is, in my mind, a fire prone area. Wind has always been very high and felt in the houses. 
The hope is that more homes in the neighborhood will sign up for the design because the more buildings that meet passive house standards in an area, the safer that area may become. So as, as each house becomes more resilient to fire, it protects the neighbors, and the neighbors protect the neighborhood, and the neighborhoods protect the community. So there's this kind of cascading effect. Every good decision making the homes better actually improves the entire community as a result.